Hi students, in the previous class we discussed about the structure of DNA and central dogma. Do you remember what is central dogma? The flow of genetic information from DNA to mRNA to protein. In majority of organisms, DNA is the genetic material. But in some viruses, RNA acts as the genetic material. In such cases, the flow of information is from RNA to DNA. And that process is known as reverse transcription. Okay. In the beginning of the chapter, I told you, the length of the DNA is determined by the number of nucleotides or the number of base pairs. And you know the distance between two consecutive bases, base pairs. It is 0.34 nanometer or 0.34 into 10 raised to minus 9 meters. In order to find out the total length of the DNA, you have to find out the total number of base pairs multiplied it with the distance between the base pairs. For example, human beings, there are 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to 9 base pairs. When it is multiplied with the distance between the base pairs, we will get a value around 2.2 meters. Just imagine the DNA is this much lengthy. How is it possible to keep this lengthy DNA inside a small nucleus? Let us check the mechanism what is actually happening inside. In prokaryotes, you know, there is no nuclear. Okay, there is no well-defined nucleus. Nuclear membrane is also absent. But the genetic material is present at a particular part. It is not scattered throughout the cell. It is confined to a particular region. How is it possible? DNAs are negatively charged. This negatively charged DNA wrapped around the positively charged proteins. And it is present, confined to a particular region inside the cell. And that region is known as the nucleoid. Okay. In the case of eukaryotes, here the positively charged proteins are called histones. These histones are organized to form a unit of 8 molecule called histone octamer. It is positively charged. The charge of the protein depends upon the abundance of amino acid with the charged side chains. Okay, here the histone is made up of basic amino acids like lysine and arginine with positive side chains. So, altogether there is a positive charge. DNA is negatively charged. So, this DNA wrapped around the positively charged histone and form a structure called nucleosome. Here you can see that. That is nucleosome. And these nucleosomes, there are around 200 base pairs of DNA helix in a typical nucleosome. And when we look through the microscope, we can see these structures okay, as a beads on a string like structure because you know the chromatin, these nucleosomes to form a structure called a chromatin, the colored bodies inside the nucleus. Clear? And at the time of cell division, this chromatin further organized to form chromosomes. Okay. And in higher levels of packaging, some additional proteins are required apart from histones. These proteins are known as non-histone chromosomal proteins. NHC protein. And here in the entire chromatin, you can identify two regions. One region which is loosely packed, lightly stained and transcriptionally active. These regions are known as euchromatin. It is functionally active. And the other regions of the chromatin, which is densely packed, brightly stained and transcriptionally inactive. These regions are known as heterochromatin. In this period onwards, we know 
some genetic material is transferred from one organism or one generation to next generation but no one knows the exact biochemical nature of that genetic material whether it is protein or dna or rna no idea at that time later in 1928 a scientist named frederick griffith conducted a series of experiments in streptococcus pneumoniae it's a bacteria which causes pneumonia in mice okay and he identified there are two types of such bacteria one bacteria is able to produce a smooth polysaccharide coat around its body these are called the s strain bacteria the other category which lacks such a coat and these are known as the r strain in this the s strain is more virulent and it is able to cause disease it causes pneumonia to the mice but the r strain bacteria is not able to cause the disease and he conducted the experiments in such a way that first he take some a strain bacteria streptococcus pneumoniae bacteria and inject it into the mice okay what happens mice die because these are a strain i told it is virulent and it is able to cause disease so the mice die in the next stage he used r strain bacteria and the same process injected into the mice what happened mice live there because it is not able to cause any disease in the third stage he used heat killed a strain a strain bacteria are heat killed and injected into the mice at that time again mice live okay in the last stage he used heat killed a strain plus along with that he used live r strain okay and together injected into the mice surprisingly the mice died and he identified some a strain live a strain in this that means this heat killed a strain transformed something to the r strain which make this r strain to become a strain okay and he called it as the transforming principle because he was unable to identify the exact nature biochemical nature of that transforming principle but he understood something is transferred from a strain to heat killed a strain to r strain which make them a strain okay and at that time most of the people believe that it may be the protein which acts as the genetic material later three scientists avery macleod and mccarty they proved the biochemical nature of the genetic material they purified the chemicals from this heat killed a strain and identified which one is responsible for converting the r strain to a strain okay so that extract that purified chemicals include proteins rna and dna okay first they used some protease enzyme protease means the enzyme which digest proteins so all the proteins are removed from this then they checked so the again the r strain become a strain okay that means it is not the protein which is responsible for this transformation next level they used rna as rna as means the enzyme which digest rna now rna is removed okay so again they checked now they happen the r strain again become a strain that means it is not the rna which is responsible for this transformation 
in the last stage they use the dna as enzyme here it remove the dna now they checked the r strain cannot become a strain that means it is the dna which is responsible for this transformation so they proved the biochemical nature of the genetic material is dna but many scientists are not ready to believe this later hershey and chase proved it scientifically that means the biochemical nature of the genetic material that experiment we can study in the next class thank you